Welcome one and all to this sixth episode of the ND series four with me Mike and me Zoe and today we are going to be doing some stuff uh, yes we have a couple bugs at least one that I'm aware of that needs to be fixed and then we need to um, we need to still enable a bunch of these buttons there's clearing the list that isn't there there's loading the list that isn't there there's saving the list that needs to be there before we can load the list so there's a bunch of things at the moment we're capable of uh, adding things so you put dairy yeah sure i was showing mommy how this works but it, i used exactly the same systems as we did but the thing that's annoying is if we go to sweets and then say add white chocolate or whatever and then we say add new item and you're going to choose dark chocolate eh? dark chocolate sure dark chocolate 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 hit enter see what happens yep I want it to stay here, and it doesn't, and that's really annoying. Um, so that's something that we need to figure out why it's happening. Now, control M O. Whoops. I think just press control O. Okay. Now, uh, where was I? Uh, database. Do do do. So add item to database. Dix grocery sort. Uh, save groceries database, convert database to string. Okay, hit control F, where this is called. We're gonna go to all open documents. All right, so here's the thing. Then rebuild categories and items. <laughs> Create categories, current category. Hmm. There should be a current category goes to create categories, feeds it current category, set category category. That's not happening. At least it looks like it isn't. Hmm. Here, go debug.log current category. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Let's check. <clears throat> Play. Sweets. Add new item. Pause. So here it says loaded. Okay, fine. Whatever. And uh, let's see a sweet that we can add that's useful. Um, that we sometimes take. We sometimes take different kinds of chocolate chips. Uh, yeah. Would peanut butter count as a sweet? Uh, possibly. I don't, it's a good question. That uh, I think I'd count that as breakfast or something like that. I don't know. Um, let me think. There's got to be a sweet we sometimes take. Um, sometimes take. I don't know. I can't think of one. Does sugar count as a sweet? No, that would be bakery. In fact, I think quite a bit of this chocolate will also be in bakery. Um, chocolate raisins. There you go. Yeah, that's good. Chocolate. Wait, is it raisins or what do you raisins, get? Raisins, yeah. Raisins would be... Yeah. Then hit enter. And it went away. Now we have proof that it said sweets. So that's definitely working. That information is being received. Save. So create current category. Let's see. So create current category, or rather create categories with current category. It clears categories, then for each blah 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 blah. Set a button category key. Set category category. Category if category is not empty, which it isn't. Current category equals category. Category is a current category equals e. No, never mind. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it, here it's if current category is category, then category is null. Oh, there's your answer. Because the current category is the same as the category we are requesting, so we need to make a small change. So we do. Uh, String temp category 
equals current category semicolon copy this paste it here copy this paste it here equals empty semicolon so now we are emptying the current category therefore the temp category being sent is going to be different therefore the setting should occur now we need to think of another suite or we could go to dairy It'd be cheaper we I can do yogurt. I don't know if oh there's milk. Oh there. yogurt is here. Darn. Uh yogurt is here, mozzarella is here, uh, butter is in here. Yeah. So we'll go butter. Hit enter. There you go. That's much better. So except the button isn't selected. The button isn't selected. Um Let's see. If current category, this here, uh, current category toggled false. Wait. If what? Current category list category. If list category buttons I ID is not current category, de highlight that one. And if it is the other one, then highlight that one. Is that the deal? But we don't have that at all. <sighs> Excuse me, because <clears throat> when you set a category, I think it normally depends on it coming from the button, whereas it being independent. So when you press a button, my bet is you set a category. Press category, set category, toggle, and you see then it changes the highlight state. Mm -hmm. uh, And I think it's rebuilding the buttons, probably, so it won't be toggled. Um, force toggled. We could make a method just for this. Set up button. Um, let's see. So here create categories for each blah 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 okay here it adds the buttons and it sets up the button so we can do something here and we can say category equals equals Okay, so list category buttons count set a button button function category key k key okay copy this paste it here save now it's gonna complain a bit but that's okay and here you're gonna say comma bool space underscore force toggled equals false save okay so now we're gonna check if it's toggled so it would be uh, toggled equals copy paste save and this highlight state we can copy it exactly as we have it under press for toggle so copy this so if toggle selected hovered, we won't be there probably. So it'll be something like hovered or unhovered. Yeah, well it can't be unhovered. Uh, what's the other state? I, I don't even know. I'd probably be here. Change, so on pointer exit, selected unhovered. Okay, copy this, paste it here, save. Well, let's try. Boink. Oh, I see. There's two optionals. So we need to tell it which ones. So we're going to say force toggled colon. This means we're ignoring item parent. We're not setting anything to it. But we are setting force toggled. So that's th oh. that's how you do it. You can you can skip op optional elements 
by basically doing this. You can also feed it in the wrong order if you use this. It'll figure itself out. Uh, I think, okay, this should be good. Do but peanuts count as a sweet? I don't think they're very sweet. Okay, so dairy. Um, add new cream, uh, cheese. cream cheese. So it added cream cheese and this is now selected and toggled. So it works. So it's now in a state where I'm happy with it. So I'm curious about something. Put a note on cream cheese. Like, howdy. Mm -hmm. Now let's add a new item. Uh, and this is going to be whipping cream. So that remains there. Whipping cream is here now. We can remove it, add it. Cream cheese still remembers howdy. Okay, so we fixed this bug with a bit of a hack, but in the end of the day, it's fine. Now, if you add a new category though, so we said breakfast before, so let's do that. Breakfast. Hit enter. Okay, that's added. It doesn't bother the selection. Everything is kept. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now we go to breakfast and we can add an item and peanut we butter. can say peanut said it was gonna be in. butter. Sure. Okay, peanut butter. There we go. And uh oh. Uh oh. Key not found exception. Hmm. Key not found exception. App manager one three four dictionary keys temp category contains item. String ten category get category from item. I think it's going to be fine now. Let's quickly test it. It could be the space. No, because we've done milk, chocolate, and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, peanut butter is fine now. So we got an odd problem there. Something to do with the logic. Dictionary list, temp category. So the first step we've done in this bug is we've added a category to the database, like so. So we've added a category and then we've saved and then we converted the database to a string. Sure, that's fine. So we've added the category, so it should exist. Then the category was empty, at which point we added an, it an item to the category. And then for some reason, get category from item wasn't able to find it. So for each key value pair, K in dictionary groceries, if k value contains item. Debug.log, open round, uh, wait, first, yeah, you want to type something silly like a minus and then plus, paste, plus, minus, close round semicolon save whoops there save now the reason I'm doing this is I'm, I want to check if there's any spaces around the thing if something's wrong etc so reproducing this should not be too difficult I don't think we need to add a new cat ah we might need to add a new category actually add uh, something like jam but we usually have different kinds yeah but that goes in the notes you're right Oh, wait a moment. Uh, no, it doesn't, because if it did go in the notes, then the notes would need to be super long, like orange jam, etc. Yeah, so you're right. Let's separate them. So strawberry jam is fine. Okay. Yeah, so it's fine now. We need a new category. It won't work without. So, and we should already get, I oh, know, because we found all of the things. So let's add a new category. And new category name below is going to be uh, detergents. Okay, so we got the detergents. Add a new item and call this one. Wait, we were on a different category when we 
Yeah, that's no, yeah, no. You, it wouldn't work that way. The the only way you can add a new item is you need to be in a selected category. Be in the category. category yeah. No, no, we definitely did this. So new item, uh, we um, we can add um, fabric softener would count. Sure, fabric softener. Hit enter. Okay. So now I'm gonna hit click. And we get a key not found again. A string temp category. Temp category. Why? Why temp? Oh, because we go and find it from that set item temp category get category from item debug.log dot log over it uh, stay same thing as before just to be sure now type item space yeah close round semicolon we may need to open our reg edit here unity player session play the unit grocery database there it is and we can start messing with it if we want to so yeah. fabric softener and detergents there we can delete this hit OK and now it's it's going to be without that stuff again whoops we may have messed with it a little bit but that's fine so we are waiting for that item request so let's quickly see if we're getting those let me remove maximize and play so we can see the debug log easily dairy milk okay so we got milk yeah remove milk we got another milk perfect add new category detergents Add new item. Uh, sure. Just just go something like sponge. Sponge. Sponges. Yeah. Sponges. Okay. Now I'm gonna click it. We got sponges, which by the way sounds like a category, so that's wrong. It should, should be singular, but sponge. Well, we had them all plural. And so as you can see, it's correct. Sponges is actually appearing and it's correctly written. Temp categories. So the error is still happening. And the key not found here. So it, the only possibility is that the temp category is not right. Now wait. I mean, hmm, okay. Copy all of this. It even tells me key not found. I don't know why. Paste. Copy temp category. Paste. Save. I don't know why I didn't go there directly right away. All right. <clears throat> the saving system is daft. Okay. A doesn't matter. Call it A. Hit enter. No. A. Call it B. Hit enter. Select B. Boink. B and A. They both exist. All right. Now, <laughs> now I'm a little confused because A dict list. Ooh. Dict list. That makes sense. The current list doesn't have that. And the same goes for the notes. Copy and pasta. I mean, copy and control F. You don't need to copy, it's just my habit. Um, okay. For each key value, key value pair, dict groceries, add K 
key update grocery list display so that's where we're doing it we are adding one of of these uh, per category going through the categories that exist yeah we're adding a list with a new thing but what about the notes hit control F this one is that ad hoc okay so the only one we need to worry about is this so copy this thing okay this is the current category rebuild paste this save now when we add a category do we want to select that category right away or do we want to leave on the current selected category as we have it now mm. what do you mean by leave on the current selected well so suppose category. you're on there yeah you go add new category mm -hmm. call it poo you yeah. add poo you hit enter and the cursor remains on dairy with all the dairy selected but the poo now exists Sh would it be better to actually also activate poo right away yeah if you're making a category you'd probably want to add an item to it already yes so in that case we need to change this the way it works a little bit and it's gonna make things even easier we don't even need temp category you request a string here space underscore new category so that's the one we just created, right? Mm -hmm. Now we can delete temp category. We can copy new category. We can paste it here. And we can paste it here. And we can save. So, rebuild categories and. Aha, uh aha, -huh, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. It's not quite as simple as that, <laughs> obviously. Uh, and let's quickly go and delete A and B since we're here. Okay. Uh, so it's not quite as simple as that because adding an item does the same thing. So we can't really do it if we're building an item. Uh, okay. Here you're going to say equals empty save here you're gonna say if open round copy new category paste it is not is not empty close open and close here save create a string now I wanted to create temp category but I think I think temp category may exist already it doesn't good it must be local so temp category you we can call it temp again so temp category semicolon uh, copy paste equals copy paste semicolon uh, actually copy current category equals paste so say let's think about the logic here we can send or not a new category okay mm -hmm. by default we don't yeah. we create a new temp category which we assign current category to suppose you're on dairy temp category becomes dairy then okay. you check if the new category is in fact empty or not because if it isn't empty you want to add it to the available possible ele uh, categories in the current list that exists right because you have a list with all of the category that already existed but mm -hmm. the new category you just created isn't in the list which is why it was causing that problem so we need to add that new category to the list and by list I mean your grocery list the one that you're currently working on okay. then temp category is going to become the new category because we know we have the new category and we want that one selected the current category is going to become empty anyway because otherwise there's a conflict and then we send it not new category copy temp category See, we got something wrong, paste, save. 
because the temp category is either going to be the new category if a new category exists or the current category if the new one does not exist. Yeah. The current category gets raised anyway, so that's all good. Now, for the rebuilding of things, uh, pop-up manager, I believe. So this was the one that rebuilds the categories, etc. So add category, get category, TU move, text to lower trim. That's the one. So let's create a temporary string here. Call it temp category. Let's quickly check that this variable doesn't already exist. It does not. All right. Cut this equals. Yeah, I forgot the equals. Semicolon. Now we'll copy temp category and we can feed it here and here. Save. So instead, the items are obviously going to not care because the category isn't changing. So this should yeah. now work correctly. Let's try and create a proper category this time. So again, detergents. Uh, wait. <gasps> Ooh, how do you like them apples? Yeah. Whoopsie daisy. Oh boy. Oh boy. All sorts of bad. Okay, so we found yet another bug. Welcome to the world of poor code. Okay, so what's happening here is that we are clicking away and we are adding a category based on the TMU input text box, etc. And we're never checking that the text box is not empty because mm -hmm. if it is empty, we've got a problem. Um, If open round temp copy temp category paste it is not empty close round open a squiggle and close it here save instead if that's not the case just don't do anything now we're gonna create another string copy all of this basically paste it here and here you're gonna change this to temp item save copy temp item paste it here, save, and here you're going to say if open round paste is not empty, close round, open the squiggle, and close the squiggle, save. Basically, if you're doing an empty thing, don't, just don't. This doesn't mean you can't be an idiot. If you want to press A and hit enter, you can. Mm -hmm. So let's test this a bit. So we're going to add a category, click away. Notice nothing is selected. Try dairy, add a category, click away. We're still good. Perfect. Yeah. Now add a category, type something, erase everything, erase everything. Okay, we're still good. Awesome. Detergents. Let, wait, let's click away. Okay, it's added detergents and it's selected it just as we told it to. Yeah. Now we can add a new item, which we can call uh, fairy liquid. What? Fairy liquid. That's that's soap, dish soap. Oh. Dish soap. Mm -hmm. Dish soap has appear appeared. It's happy. We can select it. It's happy because we've added it to the list. So all of a sudden it's happy. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that we need to worry about. At the moment, it's working fine. Uh, let's check the notes for this. Yeah. Okie doke. Well, in that case, I think we're relatively happy here. Hmm. All right. What do we do next? Clear list. That's an easy one. Should yeah. Let's do, do a clear list then. Let's do a clear list. Uh, I don't even know where we are. So. Uh, there should be a confirmation pop-up for that because you're losing your, your entire list. Now the pop-up needs to look different. Therefore, let's go and create a pop-up for that. So pop-ups, pop-up block, that one stays. Add category item, that one stays. We can duplicate this. Rename this one to clear list confirmation. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Clear list information has a background. That's fine. Has a title. 
So this one should say something like, are you sure? Are you sure? You sure? Are oh yo yo sure? That you you want to uh, erase your list um, let's change the text to middle let's change the text to top uh, and here you're gonna say wait we don't need the input box so we can delete that uh, and you can now say um, all unsaved changes will be lost will be lost hello lost semicolon no yeah what am I <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> I'm a bit used to it uh, okay so I don't really dig the way the text is behaving so let's reduce its size a bit there you go cheating now this one does not have a vertical layout group let's give it one type layout or l a y that's enough vertical layout group boink no problemo <laughs> fixed okay now the second thing we're gonna need is we need a container with buttons so oh wait a second i'm a potato remove component here we need a container with buttons, so empty, call this one buttons. And this one is gonna be, uh, we got some buttons around, don't we? Scenes prefabs, hey, we got a button prefab. Now before we do anything, we're gonna tell this one, hey, you're gonna have a horizontal layout group. That's right. And this button says fruit at the moment, but it won't say fruit later. So call this one button yes. I hit enter. How did we usually deal with these? Item list, list, list buttons, list BG, list title, title, clear button. Yeah, so yes button we call it. Oh, interesting. These are not prefabs. Let's possibly a good idea mm, let's go with that duplicate this load button and call this one yes button yes yeah, sorry Goku we're in the middle of the show so we tend not to respond to people while we're doing it uh, but in 30 minutes we'll be done and we can talk to you if you like Okay, so yes button. Uh, so this one says load at the moment. I think it gets edited later, so this isn't a worry. Uh, there is nothing we can do with this. So the image and text, mm, it's fine. So the and only the text thing should probably the, be. Uh, but it, it gets redone, I think. It oh. gets changed when it gets um, constructed. But the one thing that doesn't get changed though is the color that That's I'm sure right. of. So we can change the color to. Yes and no. Now, um, so we should have not yes and no, but rather uh, um, confirm and cancel. Mm -hmm. So confirm should probably be red to indicate that it's the dangerous option. And cancel should be green. So control D, go with no, remove these. And here you can say text green. Here you go. Uh, all right. Actually, I have predefined the reds and greens, so let's just use stuff that we already have. Now, notice how close the buttons are. That's a bad idea. You can accidentally click on one or the other. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of UX work and simply do this. Right, we're gonna space them apart say by 150 now here it's going to complain you see it's pushing over the reason yeah. is both of these buttons actually have minimum widths so we're going to remove this component and interestingly enough there is no difference but I think that's a bug 
with Unity, that is. So we're going to hide. And show, exactly, I was right. So the update wasn't happening. But anyway, now it's fine, and we got the little, um, the little, the little guy ready. Now these two buttons. Hmm. I'm not really sure who sets them up. It should probably be when we deal with this confirmation. So let's take a look at the pop-up manager. Ah, there we go. So here we can do uh, clear uh, list confirm. Yeah, save. Okay, so this one has pop-up titles, pop-up containers, uh, and we have input box. Uh, one thing we should also add is buttons, but there should be more than just one. So this is becoming a bit unwieldy. Uh, let's see. Pop-up block. Oh, right, right. I remember what that is. So, pop-up containers. These are just game objects. Hmm. We could create a specific class called pop-up which would contain all of this information and then we could deal with it much more efficiently. So we can it can have its own title, it can save its own input box, it can have its own buttons and so on. And the buttons would need to know which type of button they are. It's getting a bit more complicated for you, but I don't think you care particularly, so perhaps we can do it anyway. All right, so I don't think we've ever done this together before, but the deal is you have a class that's your sort of master here. Mm -hmm. It deals with everything, but you can make classes inside classes. We've done this in Adventure. We have? Mm -hmm. All right, so what you want to do is you open a square bracket and you say system. Serializable. Yes. System dot serializable close. This is gonna allow it to be viewable in Unity as long as you use uh, variables that can be parsed. Now here you're gonna create a public class and call it pop up. Open a uh, uh, squiggly and hit enter twice and close it. Save. Now in here we're gonna need to tell it all of the variables. So we're gonna have the game object. So it's gonna be public game object container. Object container semicolon enter. Um, the second one is going to be a pop up title. So, public, copy this, pasta, copy this, space, pasta, singular, semicolon. Now we need an input field. Uh, The input field would imply that there could be multiple input fields. But technically speaking, I think all of the boxes that will have an input field will only have one and will all be fairly simple. So I think we can leave the input field out of this. But what we can do here is we can add buttons. So you go public button custom button that is, and custom buttons, uh, array, custom buttons, there it is, semicolon. Now, I'm thinking, because I need to take a look at how our app manager is actually setting up the buttons. There you go, set up main buttons. Okay, so it's giving it a button function. So these button functions are pretty important. It doesn't work without and it also gives it a text that's important too therefore the custom button should kind of have uh, that information already but it's gonna be excuse me this but it's gonna be just as unwieldy because you would need a separate array and you need to make sure that the array has all of the right elements ah, in the end of the day it's not that bad so let's do that public uh, button type, whatever we call it, button function probably, uh, array, button functions. And you're gonna have to type it all up. Functions, semicolon, and then public, uh, 
uh, string array array button contents uh, not contents let's call it captions yeah captions is good semicolon save now request pop up let's take a look at this okay so here all of the stuff is being done let's change this a little bit we're going to add the string for the title directly in here yeah it would be also good to have a pop-up type oh we do we do yeah that will that's going to be implicit create here a serialized field private string name so we'll be able to keep track of this fairly easily by just typing the name we want in there the last okay. thing I want is I want the title so right here you can say public string and there's only one of them uh, space and pop-up title content semicolon and now what we're gonna do here is we're going to create the serialized field copy pop up paste it here and oh never mind undo that's the only one I don't want to change paste it here and put up put it there you go and now we can delete this save and pop-up containers is really going to complain now everywhere but that's okay copy pop-ups paste it here paste it here dot and now we need to tell it what dot container dot set active false save and now it's gonna be pop-ups again copy paste dot container set active true since we're here copy all of this pasta it here save and copy this paste it here we're gonna remove this stuff and this is incorrect here we're going to say um, copy this paste type content I think there pop up title content save and you can copy all of this paste it here save now notice one thing these two are now absolutely identical because we have yep. made our code much more efficient so cut this paste it here and, and delete all of this Ta -da! so that's not bad now what we're going to do is we're going to clear list confirm so here you're gonna say case space tab dot colon break semicolon save so pop up activate block true pop up block activate block true I think that's probably the case anyway so and this is probably the case anyway also so cut these two paste them here you can also cut this and paste it here this is the only individual ch change so save here because this what matters for these is to set up the buttons mm -hmm. right so we're gonna go for tab tab or FBR and you're gonna copy all of this paste it here and custom buttons I think it's called there it is dot length mm -hmm. save copy all of this paste I dot setup button okay open round so button function we're gonna get it from here and button caption we're gonna get it from there so we're gonna need all of this copy um, never mind all of this copy paste and B button functions wait copy this paste comma and now it wants the string ID 
get an item parent. I don't know that that matters to us at the moment. I don't remember what that's for. Whatever. Shouldn't be a problem now. Uh, copy all of this. Paste it here. And don't... Oh, I've noticed something. This is wrong. This needs to be I. Yeah. And now you can type... C for caption, I think. Captions. I. Close friend, semicolon. Say. This is quite a bit abstract compared to normal code you and I write together, just because I try to keep it simple. But basically, the way it works is you're using put and converting it into an int. Okay. So your you, this word becomes an int. So basically, your zeroth item is going to be add category, then add item, then clear list on confirm, clear list confirm, etc. When you get the clear list confirm, because everything is kept into the subclass, the subclasses should have all of the information that is necessary for it to to need to, to know what to do with the buttons, what to do in terms of what function those buttons are going to have, and what to do in terms of what text those buttons need to have on them. And all mm -hmm. of this is going to happen automatically because now all of these parts are shared in this subclass. They can all they are shared between almost all pop-ups or probably all pop-ups therefore these can be set outside of the differences therefore it leaves this this code a lot leaner there's a lot less than you need to write in here uh, to make it work correctly now confirm pop-up we're still gonna have to take a look here so let's see your screen to okay yeah this one's fine so in this case you go case uh, ah wait a moment save now, the confirming of the pop-up is a bit difficult because uh, it needs to come from the block as well. So the block should go press, click ID, confirm pop-up, click ID is negative one. So here it confirms the pop-up, but for the text, we don't want to click away and actually click yes. Mm -hmm. So in the case of clicking away, for this particular confirmation, we should simply instead say no, like mm -hmm. by default every time. Yeah. So that doesn't really help us very much. Um, hmm. Let's see. So confirm pop up. Yeah, it must depend on whether it came from the button or not. So confirmed is not going to be sufficient. Hit control R here twice. And do underscore, save. So instead of confirmed, we need to know whether it comes from the pop-up block or whether it comes from something else. So here you're going to say bool underscore from pop-up block. Now this one's gonna start crying and that's fine. So uh, confirmed, now from pop-up block is not important for these, but it's important for the other one. So here you go, case, space, type, uh, tab, dot, clear list, confirm, break, semicolon. So if open wrap underscore from pop-up block, close round, open squiggle, close. Save. And here we're going to also say or not confirmed. Smash mark underscore confirmed. Yep, okay, there it is. Save. So if either it came from the pop up block or it was not confirmed mm -hmm. with the button, then what we do is we close this, but we don't do anything. Okay. Okay? So what we're going to do. Be is, is the opposite. So we're going to say if not from the pop up block and it was confirmed, save, that means we confirm it from the button so we can actually do what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So we go to uh, app manager, I presume, dot script dot clear, try clear list, I don't know. Oh dear, try list. Oh dear. Well, control 
and O. Clear categories, clear items, clear, clear items, set clear. item, create grocery list, clear grocery list. Okay, create grocery list, clears the grocery list, then rebuilds it. Clear grocery list, what does it do? Uh, we need that create grocery list. So here say public, save, and we create the grocery list from scratch. So that's all we're going to do, which should work just fine. Uh, create grocery list, open close round, semicolon. That should be it. Okay, save. Now, we need to take a look at the functions of the buttons. So, button function, we got clear list, load list, then confirm yes, confirm no. Save. Okay, so confirm yes and confirm no. And we have an error. Yeah, that's, that's easy. True. Save. Okay, and that's all we need for now. Uh, except in the custom button, we still need to do a press. And, okay, clear list. So pop-up manager. Script. Request. Pop-up. Open round. Hit tab. Dot. Clear list confirm. Close round, semicolon, save. Okay, so that's the first thing. And then we need a case here. Tab dot confirm. Oops, sorry. There's okay. Dot confirm yes, colon break. And copy both of these. Paste them here and just type no. Save. All right, so confirm no, save. So if we confirm yes, it's going to be pop-up manager open uh, dot script sorry dot confirm I think it's called confirm there confirm pop-up open round and this is going to be true comma false close round semicolon and now copy both of these I mean just that paste and this is false save okay so all of these should be now in a good state. What's not in a good state though is our pop-ups settings which have now changed drastically so we need to refill them. Yeah. So here's these. Now you see we have the, the, the notes which is pretty good. This is going to help. So let's just say one for now and then we're going to say name and this one you can say uh, I don't remember but I think it's add category. Mm -hmm. So the container, you need to go to the add category item. This should be the container. And then pop-up title content is a category name below. No, no, this is proper text. You're writing to a person. Yeah, sorry. Space. Yeah. And another space. And delete below. Whoa. Now, and let's say type. Type new maybe. Uh, you may want to leave category in capital just so it's easier to. Yeah. Type new category name below. All right. So t pop up t pop up title. Um, it's right here. And custom buttons. There's none, so we don't need to worry. Now if you press two, the second one appears. And you can simply say add item. This one's already correct. Type item capital. And you're done. The second button is, well, the second pop up is done. Now, the third one will need more changes. So, this one is called clear list. Clear lust. And indeed, <laughs> clear list. So, clear list confirmation. Type, uh, are you sure? Wait, wait, wait. We've got it right there. Might as well copy it. Copy this. Now, it's not going to like this, I think. Uh, in fact, we may have a few problems that are going to be interesting for you. 
uh, pasties here. Now, these, it doesn't understand them. So here you need to type, uh, you can or can, no, this is the wrong slash. Where's the other slash? Here, slash n and then slash n again. So save, that means two line breaks. Now, oh, uh, oh this one's still called type text uh, add category item. Let's call this one title. Yeah, I don't like that though. No, rename it to uh, clear list. There you go. So now back to pop ups, and we're gonna drag clear list, clear list into here. Now the buttons we do have now, and we have two. We're just gonna add not one for now, and it's the yes button. Button functions confirm yes. Button caption. Uh, Clear. Clear list even. Okay. And then number two is no. It is confirm no. And it's going to say cancel. Okay. There we go. And all of this should now work. Save. So, doink. Index out of range exception. Index was outside the bounds of the array. Oh, right. That only applies if put is not none. So, if open round, put is not none. Well, tab and then none. Dot none. Close round, open squiggle, then close it. Save. Okay. So uh, let's rename this one put. Um, I'm, I'm trying to make a habit of doing this. All sent variable seven underscore save. Oh. <clears throat> um, and let's see. Now it should be happy. It sort of is, it sort of isn't. Current pop up, activate block true. Oh, <laughs> this is a bit daft. It only activates if it's not none. So cut this, cut, and put it here. There, that's better. Save. All right. That's why the block was there. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you. Okay, so clear list. Click away. Oh, notice the two slash ends are there. That's the exactly the problem I expected. So I'm going to explain this to you as clearly as I can, as quickly as I can. Okay. What happens is this is a special whoa, this is a special character. You can't just use it in code. It's going oh. to complain. Okay? So it reads it in a certain way, and they're called escape characters. So whenever you have this symbol and anything following it, it's going to read it as a special type of code. In fact, this is a line break. Right? Okay. Problem is, when you write this in a string inside the inspector, it thinks you're writing actual text. There is a way to write actual text. In other, way, in other words, there is a way to escape a, an escape character. And that is by doing this. So if you put two slashes, it, it will mean I'm going to ignore the first slash, but I'm going to write this in words. That's not what we want. Save. What we do want is we want to replace, we want to make sure that escape characters act as escape characters because it's trying to be intelligent for us and save us and that's annoying. So we're going to go to the pop-up manager and here where we tell it the title, here you're going to say pop-up title content, and you're going to say dot replace open round quote and you say this this n comma quote only one of them n save uh, we may need to close another one save now let's see if this guy's behaving the way we want it to because we had we saw the two slash ends right mm -hmm. so there you go that's much better 
Yeah. Are you sure? Did you want to erase your list? Cancel. Okay, Work. let's put some stuff. Cancel. Yeah. Cancel. Right click cancel. Right click cancel. Clear list. Done. Let's leave a note on the carrots. Clear list. Clear list. Carrots. Yep. There we go. So clear list is working correctly. What time is it? Ooh, it's one hour. All right, so we haven't done a whole lot, but we have done a bit. Uh, one thing we still need to do is we need to save the lists and load the lists. One thing about the hacking, how do you hack if you don't have the exact same one of these? What do you mean? Everybody has this. But would they have all this stuff in it? Well, they would have other stuff in it, but if they use the groceries database, they would have exactly this in it. And they can go right there, and they and can like, ah, I'm going to change dish soap and remove it. <laughs> they oh, could. Okay. You could do it yourself. The point is, Im imagine that you have some Steam achievements in a game or something that mm -hmm. are directly dependent on certain saves. For example... Um, you, you're not too familiar with achievements because you don't really play... Ah, you play the Xbox, though. You've played the Xbox before. So, uh, there were some achievements like... Uh, I can't think of a single cumulative ex uh, achievements inside um, um, the blob. Which game have you played on the Xbox? Rock Band? Right, Rock Band. There. Rock Band's a good example. So, inside Rock Band, in its saves somewhere... There is a thing that says whether you've unlocked a song or not, and how many stars you've got on a song or not. It looks very similar to these lists. So, basically, you can go there, open this list, and simply change and say, yep, yeah, give yourself like 3 million points and uh, 5 stars on every song, and etc. Then the next time you boot the game, boop, you get 19 achievements all in, all in one go. Oh. Right. So, what we have to do instead is we need to come up with all sorts of complex tricks to avoid people doing this. I will probably do a tutorial on this for, for Steam saves in particular in the future. But basically, what, needs to, what you need to do is you need to, first of all, distinguish between people. Your saves don't distinguish between people. On the Xbox, they do. So, if you play with your profile, you can't access my saves. If I play with your profile... Um, you can or can't? You cannot access my saves. Okay. If I play with my profile, I can only access my own saves and nobody else's. There may be some files that cross-reference, like replays, for example, or that sort of stuff may be profile-free. But most files are profile-dependent. The same thing I do on Thrusty Ship. On Thrusty Ship, all of the save files are directly tied to your, uh, to your Steam um, account. There is no way, I mean, there, may, there will be a way, obviously, if a hacker works hard enough, but I've made it uncomfortable as heck for a hacker to figure out a way to actually um, <clears throat> to actually go there and uh, and cheat their way through through the system. Right? There's other things I've done as well. Uh, I've done something called encryption. So I've basically turned the files into illegible mumbo-jumbo. The only way to, to read them is if you have a way to de decipher what's written there. So, let me give you an example of a silly decryption. That one I can tell is just my name. Is, Zoe is a, is a poop. Yes, so I wrote Zoe is a poo backwards, but what's interesting is I've written it backwards and uh, I've still kept the order, the words in order, mm -hmm. right? So you need to know the code to read it. So you need to, you need to understand it, right? By obviously I made something so incredibly simple that you were able to do it without much difficulty. Yeah. Right? But... Uh, uh, this could be this could be done much more complicated, and in fact it is. And again, Thrustyship save files are both encrypted and directly dependent on Steam user accounts. So it's super complicated for hackers to try and get the achievements. Not that they would want to, but I'm just saying, right? And okay. uh, you can't play on this PC uh, with your Steam account and get 
my saves. It doesn't work. It simply doesn't. Right? Yeah. Now, whereas the player prefs that come by default in Unity are ridiculously silly and they can go and be changed whenever you want. And as you saw, there are hundreds of Unity games right here. Yeah. Well, these many of these are mine. In fact, I think this is yeah, well, this default company, right? So, but if we went and looked at different companies, these are these are all mine. <laughs> no breaks games is here. That's from Human Full Flat. Right? So you can go and open and see what's there. Player session count, player session ID, user graphics quality. Okay, it shows B. Language, English. See? I can change that, then launch the game, it will launch in a different language. I can change it, put something it doesn't understand, and potentially guaranteed crash the game every time. Oh. Now, as you can see, only you, very, very unimportant. Uh, this this piece of information could be really important. I don't know, right? It says Unity Cloud User ID. Oh dear. Right. So, what if I have somebody else's user ID? I can download their saves. <laughs> Not ideal. <laughs> okay. Very, very daft. This. Uh, so, this is just an example. It's interesting to see that, that yeah, well, these are all my Game Jam games, probably. These are old Thrusty Ship saves, I'm guessing. Yeah, this is all ancient. Yeah, Consent Set, Gem Balance. This is this is old, but look, Gem Balance. I had 139 gems, never you mind. I had 8 million zillion trillion. <laughs> That's how you cheat. What's this? Level zero platinum. Oh gosh. This is how we used to save? Man, that's stupid. Yeah, it doesn't happen anymore. This is incredibly old stuff. But there you go. In a way, I think that will conclude the lesson for today. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again next time where we'll do the saving buttons for the list and the loading of the list. For now, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.